Welcome to the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast with psychologist Dr. Doreen Downing. Listen in as Doreen interviews people who felt they didn't have a voice or who suffered extreme speaking anxiety. You'll hear stories about how they struggled to speak up, what they did to find their authentic voice, and the confidence they now feel to speak up and make an impact. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free seven step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. And now, here is Doreen. Hi, this is Dr. Doreen Downing. I'm a psychologist and host of the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast. What we get to do here, what my listeners get to do, is have a conversation or have an opportunity to listen to a conversation I have with guests, guests who share a very unique story each time you get to hear the struggle that they might have had in finding their own voice, and not only the struggle, but the journey. And I think that's one of the things that reaches the listeners most is, hey, yeah, it does work. You can start out in a place where it doesn't feel comfortable or where you can't be expressed, but there is a way. And my guests have found that way. And not only have they found it and share their journey, they also have books and processes and workshops that you can learn about so that you can find a path to find your voice. Today, I get to welcome a new friend and I'm going to say hello to Crystal Dichert. Hi, Crystal. I'm going to introduce you right now with some things that you sent me because I think it's actually poetic and I love what I wrote. So now I'm going to read it. <laughs> Riding the waves of life, guided by her intuition, Crystal has carved out a life surrounded by sunshine and rainbows on Maui. It hasn't always been that way. Growing up a good Catholic from North Dakota, her authentic self wasn't understood or appreciated, leaving her feeling stunted and silenced. And through her career as a licensed therapist and connecting with dolphin energy, a new path appeared that led to healing pain, emotionally and physically, and rediscovering herself and creating a new world to live in. I want to mention one other thing that we will get to uh, by the end is a book. You wrote a book, and I know that it had a lot to do with your journey, but creating a new world, a journey towards self-actualization. I think with my work as a therapist and your work as a therapist, that's what we're all about, helping people actualize who they really are. So I'm excited. I'm excited today to get to have this conversation with you, Crystal. Doreen, I can't thank you enough for inviting me to be on this podcast. Um, since learning about your podcast and even just li listening to your other guest stories, so life-changing. It is fabulous like you can hear them and it's like oh I can resonate with that part or oh yeah I've experienced something like that before so I feel very honored and appreciative of you allowing me to be a guest on your show as well oh absolutely well as you've said you've listened to others so you probably know as a psychologist and you know it, the value of starting in early life we're all dropped here <laughs> into a situation and it sounds like you were dropped into North Dakota of all places so let's start there with your family yeah it's funny it's such a love-hate relationship I hate the snow I hate the cold but I do love like the small townness of it and some of the values and things that I was able to learn I did not realize until I got older and kind of went on this journey and like spirituality not just religion but like spirituality within myself as well as like how I interact with the world around me I didn't realize how much as a child that was just kind of the world I lived in I didn't realize other people didn't live in that world too I lived in like my own little bubble and so there were a lot of things where I would just be talking about stuff and so many times that it was like, oh, here's Crystal. She's talking again. Oh, she's just talking. As I was a talker, I love talking, but it was never received. And I didn't realize how much not being received by people started to make me silence myself. 
that's a terrific insight. And I hope people heard that. You may be natural at just expressing yourself and especially younger when there aren't any, you know, mirrors around you, then the mirrors start and people start having attitudes or they say some things to you. How did you know then that what you were saying or what, how, how did you know? Did people say something to you? Yes and no. I could have one-on-one conversations with people and it'd be really good. But in group settings, you know, people just kind of give you a look or the conversation would come to an end. At this point in my life, I'm very thankful for my brother. He let me know. He let me know a lot um, Mm -hmm. that I talked a lot and I should stop talking. Uh, (laughs) But we now joke around about it. I actually just gave a little speech at my grandma's funeral. And afterwards, my brother looked at me and he's like, this is the first time in our lives that I haven't wanted you to stop talking. And of course he was joking with me, but it was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I found my voice. And to like get that feedback, I just turned 40. So to get that feedback at 40 of like, oh, people don't want me to stop talking. It was a, it's a whole new adventure. Mm-hmm. But I do get feedback. Girls can be really mean when they're younger. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the other girls around me, there was a lot of things that came up. And also as a therapist, finding your voice kind of comes in stages. Each time you kind of reach this new insight of who you are or how you want to exist in the world, your voice has to come along with it. You That's know, so. fabulous. I, I love that visual. As we step into new arenas, I would imagine even going from, you know, like grammar school into high school and then into college and then into the work world and then into relationships. I mean, I'm not saying relationships are last, of course, but I love what you just said about your voice has to catch up with you. (laughs) A lot of the healing I find myself doing is like if it manifests into a physical sensation, most people feel it like in their solar plexus or like their upper stomach. And I saw a thing recently that was talking about the chakras and it connected how, you know, like circularly two of them are always connected. So if you heal one, you also have to heal the other. And I was surprised because with the solar plexus, it's it's attached to the throat, which makes sense. Every time we find a deeper level of who we are and our self-worth, which we hold in our solar plexus, um, we also have to find a voice to be able to speak that and own it and stand in it. So meeting with you right now in this moment is like another level of my own growth on finding my own voice on like my next phase too. So it's so surreal to like be giving this talk as I'm in my own process of finding my own voice at this next juncture in life. Oh, well, I have two thoughts right now. Part of me wants to follow up with exactly what you said. And the other is usually I like to stay a little back in the early history, but I I feel just drawn to follow up with what you just said. This new you that feels like she's catching up, her voice is catching up with the healing. What comes up when you follow, when I follow up on what you just said? Like, what path are we going down now? (laughs) Yeah. It's interesting because even like writing the book, on a side note, I thought like it was very heartwarming that you pointed out the goal of like self-actualization, right? Like we want to find ourself and like be able to stand as ourself. And so when I wrote the book, I was like, oh, this is me standing in it. This is myself. And since then, there's been this whole new level of like, now that I know who I am, how do I get rid of all of the things that I'm not? That was when like the mirroring of what was put on me, like really started to like show and having to work through it. And like, do I want to work through it? Who's going to be mad at me? Right. I I love what you just said around the book in self-actualization and that finding yourself and coming to know yourself more deeply is when some other things pop up, the not use. And it was interesting Mm. that you didn't go through the not use to find the you, you found the you, and now that helps you face the not use. That's what I heard. Oh, yes. Which at this point in my life as well, I talk about finding a voice. I'm working with a lot of older wise women and doing some 
projects with them. And one thing I found is that, you know, we talk about the cycles as therapists, but really in life, like it's layers, right? So there was layers of what is not me that had to get removed in order for me to even write the book for that part of me to come forward. Mm -hmm. But as I step forward through that, it was only like the first layer or the second layer, right? It comes back around and it's like, all right, it's time to stretch and grow again. Here's another layer of who you are or aren't. And, um, and now, I, you know, as I say, this is like me coming out and having my voice. Yeah. It's like an opportunity to um, choose with my voice. Who do I want to hear me? How do I want to be heard? How can I understand with my own voice how I am projecting myself? And I think it ties into just layers, right? Like my awareness now of how my words are perceived by others also helps me use my voice in a way where it can be heard understanding that if someone can't hear me it's not because there's something wrong with me it just might be where they're at um disagreements like if people don't agree with what I'm saying oh my gosh it used to devastate me like oh no I disappointed so it used to devastate me but now it's like oh this is just where they're at on their journey it doesn't have to be tied into me so I guess that's my roundabout way of like the layers of who I am not, right? How I can speak up and how I can just have more power in my voice Mm -hmm. or I say in my voice, but I also want to note, right? Like there's power in choosing not to speak just because someone asks you a question. You don't have to respond. Uh Well, there's so much wisdom coming through you in such a rapid fire way. (laughs) I love it. And I want to come back to uh, some of the things that I've just heard you say and this idea about the expressing yourself in a way that you know you may get a reaction from somebody. In fact, I was just working with somebody yesterday who had uh, some facial reconstruction so she's got some bruises on her face and she's not wanting to go to this family event because she's afraid she's going to be judged right and so what you're saying has something to do with what we worked on yesterday is how to accept whatever it is that you are choosing for yourself in life whether it's something other people might judge facial reconstruction that you then know your own reason your own truth and can stay in there and to have the centering I guess you might say and the stake in the ground and let others have their judgments it's okay they get to be who they are and I love what you just said about people are at different places so let them be at the place they happen to be and you get to be where you are yes oh I love that great work so with you then how about some example of maybe the yes and somebody being judgmental or the no where somebody asked a question that you just talked about saying no you don't have to answer that so many examples the first thought that popped up was you know I use the term I'm a good Catholic from North Dakota right I was raised a good Catholic I now feel like I'm a recovering Catholic because I have that Catholic guilt down I'm good at it but when writing the book it was really me stepping into I can't just stay in this small town mentality of how the world works like the world is bigger to me spirituality is now a thing I was connecting with dolphin energy and all of these things were coming up mind you I've always been landlocked so to tell people you know dolphin energy my mom at one point was like Crystal Lynn are you worshiping dolphins now Um. I was like Uh, No, that's not how energy works. You know, that was an example of if I'm trying to speak my truth and I have all these new and amazing things that are happening and my world is opening up and possibility and it's, it's free and it's so, oh, I can do whatever. Right. Uh, And then the people I'm sharing this with are coming from a mindset of I'm worshiping dolphins. uh Uh-huh. Yes. I was talking about the judgment of others and the, I don't mean to say narrow-minded, but that's what's coming to me. Just that phrase, I guess, for people who aren't watching you and only listening to you, you just did this wonderful spreading of your arms, opening and doing that felt like such an expression of acceptance of yourself, of 
people who make choices that others might be judgmental of. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Being able to open your arms like that, right? Like it is really freeing. I actually do a lot of work with people where we just pause for a minute and we do that stretch, right? Like bring your arms, stretch them out, stretch them back. Just open up your chest yeah. and let yourself breathe. Let your heart breathe. All right. I, I choose to live from my heart space. So my heart space makes most of my decisions. If that's what's going to tell my voice what's coming out, you just got to kind of nurture it and be free. And my mom, you know, she's come along. This was a while ago when we had this conversation, but also just realizing the world that she lived in and she worked so hard to create. She's finally living in her truth. Since she was a little girl, she wanted to, you know, hit all these accomplishments. She got her master's degree, even while being a mom and by working, right? My dad was supportive. I really appreciate her for so many things because she paved the way for me to be able to be a strong, independent woman which I'm eternally grateful for. But what strong, independent woman looks like to me looks very different in her life. And neither one of us is right or wrong. But before that, I would just choose to not talk about myself Uh because the audience was not open to the same experience I was having. So again, silencing my own self. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have a question from what you just shared there about your heart and opening your heart. What would you say was, I know it's a process. It's not just like, boom, a moment and a light switch you turned on and say, hey, (laughs) hello world, here's my heart. But was there a moment or moments where you felt like your heart was, well, that you started to realize that the difference of, of who you are and your energy is heart energy? Yes, this is a lot of what my book was about. My book is is completely just a journey about my experience. I think everyone's experience is unique and special in its own right, uh, which is another reason why I love your podcast, right? Because everybody gets a chance to kind of share their story. Um, and throughout that journey, I noticed and that in my chest space, when I think of like coming from my heart or when I noticed the space, it was tight it'd be kind of closed off. It's almost like there's a bunch of walls there. So I think in pictures, definitely not words. So when I would think of like what that space felt like, it was very much like a wall. And then it was like, there's protection here. It, it can't open. Um, but I remember the first time, like we cracked it off the jobs a bit. Uh, and it, it was like entering, it, entering the ocean. Now it's just I'm free. I love water. Obviously, I'm very connected with dolphins. I live in Maui. I'm so happy to not be landlocked anymore. So I have a lot of water analogies. But it was really like just going through the floodgates. Those floodgates were opening and just flooding in. And the world was so big and it was so free and it was so light and endless possibilities. And then I came out of that meditation and I was like, oh, oh, that's not where I live now. I could feel the closed offness again. So it was almost like they talk about gateway drugs, right? Like I got a little snippet and I wanted more of it. And as I like did that work and started on that work, the lady I was working with going through the process, I remember talking to her one day and she's like, how are you doing? I'm freaking happy. Uh And she's like, oh, is that a good thing? I'm like, no, this is terrible. And she's like, I'm so confused. If you're happy, why is this terrible? I don't get it. I'm like, because this is like a form of torture. Now that I have experienced true happiness, I also realize how miserable I have been for so long. And to be able to voice that, right? To be able to say that to someone who didn't judge me in return, she just kind of let it be what it was. I feel like that was a very big change for me to know that happiness is a possibility. And even though I'm living in this other spot where I'm not happy, I can get through whatever those barriers are to happiness to open up my heart space. Mm -hmm. And as the process goes on, right, I was coaching a a high school basketball team at the time. And there was just like example after example after example that when I would stop and check in with myself and open my heart and be in my own space and my own power, the outcome that would happen was it you can chalk it up as a coincidence but it would happen over and over and over again there's one basketball game we played in it was in December it was right before winter break and we were playing so terrible in the first half it was just 
awful. I don't know how many like layups. It was just, we were not playing well. And I, I was very frustrated as a coach. My assistant coach was very frustrated and we're walking to the locker room and both of us just paused for a minute. And I feel like I have the greatest assistant coach in life. Like this man was such a godsend. He was amazing. Um, but before we walked in, it's like, all right, we need to focus on what we're doing right because no one is having fun right now. And that is not okay. That was our goal for the season. We are going to have fun. And when we walked in the locker room, they're all bickering at each other and, you know, just everybody's cranky. And my whole halftime speech was how I was so upset because nobody was having fun. How can we be playing this game? And we really focused on that. How are we going to bring back the fun? Anyway, long story short, I had an amazing team. They all rallied together. We're like, all right, win, lose, draw. We're going to at least have fun because it's our last game before break. Everybody's stressed out with tests. Forget all that. This is our, our we have 20 minutes. We can go have fun. Um, we ended up winning that game. And I had a parent from the other team email our athletic director and said, I have two younger girls that were at that game. And I feel so honored to have been able to watch how much fun they had in that sports is more than just winning or losing. And it like went to the athletic director. It radiates when you open up your space and you can bring in this freedom and this like lightheartedness and let's get back to having fun. It impacted everyone in that gym. Yeah. All right. So freedom, lightheartedness, and uh, fun. I love it. I'm going to take a brief break and we'll get back and have some more fun, freedom, and lightheartedness together, Crystal. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. Hi, we're back today with Crystal Dyshirt, and this is amazing already. I hope if you haven't heard yet and you're just tuning in, go back because Crystal has amazing energy that lights up uh, this room by I am offering today for listeners to get to know who she is and how she found her voice. And that's what we're talking about today is an insight that Crystal shared earlier was about, you know, we grow and then our voice has to catch up with us. <laughs> and in fact, Crystal admitted she's in the middle of her own growth process and being on the podcast with me today is about voicing and catching up with her belief about actualization life and the power of lightheartedness, fun, enjoyment. And there's a wall apparently that uh, she's identified that we can all relate to around our heart. If we have wall energy, kind of a tightness around our heart, then we have a clue that we are not connected to our true self. <laughs> yeah. And noticing the wall is kind of that connection, right? It's, I always tell people it's protection. The wall is not bad. It's the need to protect yourself in one way, shape or form, because something hasn't been safer. For some reason, it's just not time. That wall is like keeping it nice and tucked in and wherever it needs to be. So sometimes it's letting it out by acceptance. Sometimes it's like working through the hurt. Sometimes it's you know, I moved across the world to Maui. I lived on an island for protection so that I can be me. And I have the ocean of distance to those that don't understand me, right? So that protection can look different for a lot of people, but really nurturing that 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 wall or that tightness, it's just like a check engine light of like, hey, there's something here and you can choose to keep it or you can choose to work through it and let it go. I'm so glad that you are valuing the way that we have come to protect ourselves and that it's not something we've got to drop and then burst out of and be all we can be, <laughs> that there's value in uh, the protection and honoring it. I, I like that attitude also. When I think about protecting Myself, I have an example just the, the other day. <laughs> my my go-to protection is I don't need you. I pull back and I lived a bunch of life by myself. I can do things by myself and I don't need you. My husband said that he wanted me to uh, do more around cleaning up the kitchen because I sometimes leave stuff, I guess, on the counter. <laughs> and I I don't know. I just went to... I'll show you, I'll clean up every square inch of this counter. And I noticed it was several days that I went there 
And then <laughs> what actually ended up happening, Crystal, is that I realized I have been so busy. My, my life has gotten really, really busy and I have actually neglected him. So it was amazing once I just broke through and felt the heart energy towards my husband, hugged him and said, you're not getting enough love from me, are you? <laughs> it just felt like it softened everything. I love the idea of, you know, knowing ourselves so well and knowing our patterns and our protective spaces that we recognize it and we don't stay there for long and that there are alter alternatives that we've learned to have more heartfulness in our lives. And that means heartful relationships too, huh? Yeah, we didn't notice that. I love that because you're having a reaction. And then it was like when you stop having the reaction and you notice what it was, well, then you just brought so much more love into everybody and like awareness. Yeah. And it's not just about cleaning the kitchen, right? It's about the two of you and that connection <laughs> I love it thank yeah. you for sharing yeah I know it's not about the dishes or the crumbs I know I know <laughs> that it's something <laughs> deeper going on so that's the good yeah. thing that I hope people will get at today to take with them that if there's something that's bothering them about another person it it's not the thing itself it's usually um, an indication of something else it's probably an indication about love bottom line so something yeah. getting loved enough <laughs> yes well it's funny you bring that up I have a similar reaction with cleaning if I'm cleaning the house and no one else is cleaning oh stay out of my way I'm <laughs> so mad and I find myself doing this thing where I get mad when I'm cleaning and nobody else is cleaning or if there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be done and I'm like you should do this so like I get snippy and like sitting with it and finding like here's where I'm using my voice to project my own stuff because the reality is I'm not giving myself the time and love I'm overwhelmed and I was avoiding my stuff uh -huh. so rather than me take ownership of what I'm avoiding I'm yelling at everyone else in the house for what they're not doing yeah oh we could go on and on with these beautiful <laughs> examples of life and how we get stuck and how we break through well uh, you know I wish we had all day. But before we have to sign off here, I'd like you to say something more about your book. Is there something like tips or techniques or something the audience could take with them other than what you and I've been doing already? Yes. Um, my biggest tip, my biggest takeaway is we don't exist linearly. Like it's not A plus B equals C. There's so many different things that come and factor in to where we're at, how we got here, where we're going, like all these different things that really being able to understand that we are mind, body, and spirit and finding the harmony between all of them is necessary if you want to live as your authentic self, if you want to live in a space where you can be who you want to be. I've said this to someone and they're like, well, I'm happy right where I'm at. Perfect. Then you have found, you have found the harmony between the three of those because you're where you're at. It's when we start to notice that we're complaining all the time and we don't want to be complaining or we're tired or we're exhausted um, or there's no spark, right? There's nothing that's exciting. Or it's when we're looking for more, if we're looking for more, or if there's something that doesn't feel right, know that there's multiple parts to us. And in writing this book, like I say, it is my journey. But the people that have read it, I have clients who have read it, and almost all of them find that they read until there's a part where it brings up their blind spot. And it was like, I was reading this and I couldn't read your story anymore because my memories came up, or I started to feel this in my body, or I was really interested in this. And that's where I can meet them where they're at. The book brings in a lot of different aspects. I talk about working with EMDR. I talk about with working with Reiki. I talk about working with inner child work, other inner parts work. I even, honestly, I have past life stuff. I was a good Catholic from North Dakota. I didn't know past lives. You know, I'd heard of it, but is this real? Is this not real? My very first dolphin attunement was, oh my gosh, it was the most traumatic thing I've been through in this lifetime. And it was from a past life. So to even see how past life stuff like tied into problems and 
areas of growth that I've experienced in this lifetime, right? Like it's not linear. A plus B does not equal C. Sometimes there's a whole bunch of things and all of the answers lie within. So coming within is possible. There are ways. I always say, if you go to a therapist and you feel like you're teaching the therapist how to be a good therapist for you, it's not the right therapist. Give me a call. I'll help you see what you can't see and then find somebody who can help you with that. But finding those blind spots and finding which part of us is really needing us at any moment on our journey. That's the spot that we need to be. That's where we need to find ourselves, find our voice and find what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. That was pretty inspirational, wasn't it? <laughs> a lot of beautiful guidance there. Uh, but I, the whole idea of blind spotting, uh, I think, is, you know, it almost, I, I put the ING on it because it feels like that could be a, you know, a, a thing that people could start to say, hey, I'm blind spotting right now. You know, they come yeah. to recognize the, what they're doing as a thing that keeps them kind of from moving through and becoming more, you used the word earlier, awareness. Before we go, because we're here now, you people again who can't see are only listening. I see the dolphin painting in the back. What would be something that you can give us about dolphin energy that we can take with us? Dolphin energy. Oh, it's so amazing. It's so hard to put it in such few words because it's just like a feeling. If anyone has ever seen dolphins in the wild, like remember the feeling you got. If you ever watched Flipper, remember the feeling that you got. Um, but dolphins definitely function in a higher frequency where it just is. There's transparency. They live in pods. Like they can feel each other. So if somebody's having a bad day, it's not a secret. And the way they interact with each other with it not being a secret is so different than how we interact with people when we know somebody's having a bad day. It's almost like, oh, stay away from them. But within dolphin energy, just being a part of it, it's almost like getting just immersed in like this. The energy is very free. It's joyful. Like there's no stress. It just is. Whatever is, it can be you can do something with it. You can choose to stay with it. You can choose not to, but it's very much just moving through the flow of life. And with that higher vibration, you don't feel as heavy. You don't feel stuck in like all of the feelings, all of the muck. It's almost like you can rinse that off when you're immersed in this dolphin energy and things just become clearer. Things that um, didn't make sense before now might make sense or things that were so important now become not important. I don't know. It flows through me after completing all of the attunements. It like kind of flows through me. And so even when we started, you're like, oh, we're already playing. This is how I live my life now. It's just more play. And it doesn't mean bad things don't happen. It doesn't mean hardships don't happen, but they're just not as heavy. I don't get as stuck in them. And things just kind of flow and move. You just always moving. You can flow, you can bring in something new. You can honor the lesson learned and you can just keep going. And it's very contagious so contagious. I used to do dolphin energy healings at different like spiritual fairs when I was first getting into this. And by the end of the day, I was like, I have to go home because my stomach hurts so bad from laughing. I just can't stop laughing because you connect with people. They come in and they'll start crying because they have this big, heavy thing. All I do is connect them with this frequency. All of the work that they need happens within themselves. And then they come back and they're like, well, that was quite an adventure, wasn't it? And they're like laugh crying. And I'm like, well, you did such a great job. And then we're both laughing. I don't know how to explain it, except for it would just happen person after person after person after person. Being in those higher vibrations. There's actually been scientists that have studied DNA who have proven that with light healings and different energy work and ex being exposed to the higher vibrations, the higher frequencies, it actually physically changes our DNA. If this was at this size, you know, is at 10. Now it's at a hundred, right? Not just does it grow exponentially, but it will create new categories that didn't exist before the healing. So you can imagine by immersing yourself and doing energy work, connecting with your body, bringing in some different frequencies, kind of stepping outside the box. Now you're creating a new world because you're bringing in things that didn't exist in your DNA before. They never existed before. And now here you're bringing them into your world. Oh my gosh, I could go on for like law of attraction and manifestation and all of these things. And that's how I ended up here in Maui. But that's like a story for another day, uh -huh. for sure. 
Well, you are truly amazing. <laughs> and the sense of dolphin energy being light, lightness and fun. A word that as I was listening to you, I felt towards myself and what I want people to say is, or to get, is that it felt like acceptance. And that acceptance is permission to be, permission to be who you are. And I love this other thing that you're talking about, the movement of flow and finding the flow. And to me, that relates to voice also. The voice can flow if we, yeah. in this particular kind of truth of who we are and express it. So thank you so much for all this wonderful, bright, beautiful energy today. Thank you. Thank you again for what you do and for creating such a great space for people to use their voice, to find their voice. Appreciate you. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today for this episode of Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Each person during interviews shares what has helped them find their voice. You can learn from these guests and find your voice so you can be confident to speak up and speak out. And remember to download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll return next time. Until then, goodbye for now.